mallets and things given me after my pa dad who first flushed Idaho dirt knuckles sometime before 1922. Our junior obliged himself in the otter slick boil of a June Tuesday night, the almanac called the devil's own bathtub. I was looking for my nip shears and come up on him nestle eight fingers deep of feed hose. The minute I looked into all those eyes, I knew he weren't no normal spud. It took us a flick to figure a right foe for our junior. Couldn't pull plow on account of his condition. He weren't worth a fist of box marbles for house chores, neither. My wife Murmur is the one who showed him the dance, and he's just a tot. His feet weren't put too right, so we just sort of jumped here and there a bit. But he loved it, so we just let him be, even though he looked a packed mule chewing bumblebees. Murmur wanted to put the learning on him just herself, keep him away from the other boys. Kate never could see him as nothing but my own kin, though, and had to treat him as such, which meant sending him off for regular schooling. The other boys. Most of the pawns is chunk rut farmers, too, so they was keen to tape balls just fine, but they ain't never seen a totter plop square in a books room with him, and suppose it didn't set right. They made a fool of him something fierce. Didn't stop for the rest of his schooling. I remember one boy who jugged a gallon of his ma dad's brown gravy and doused our junior like made her paste on a hornet's nest. <laughs> Rest of the day he was hounded by miter dads, picking in a chunk of bites as big as Lincoln quarters out of his head. Didn't help none he wouldn't quit dancing. Should have kept him on the farm. He belongs on the farm. Where is he now? I wish I knew. I really do. He just left this. I hope he finds it. For all our sake.